Welcome back everyone, I hope you're doing well, and today I've got a spicy edition of the news because the big business brains behind World of Warcraft have graced us with multiple new consumption occasions. We've also got a clearer look at Dream Surge rewards, and we're seeing a lot more of 1017 actually shape up. And over at Warcraft Logs, they are developing a new tool that honestly is an utter game changer and will absolutely solve a major problem that World of Warcraft is going to run into in the future. Developers, 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 developers. Developers, 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 developers. And of course, as you know, we're a game studio. We made a game, and right now it's 25% off, and that ends tomorrow. We also dropped our free epilogue DLC update, so that's there. Of course, the Steam ratings are all nice and high, which we're all chuffed about. So you can check out The Pale Beyond on Steam if you want to help us out and get some narrative survival adventure goodness. And also, here's some of the collector's edition uh, goodies that my art team put together, store.bellular.games, to check that out. With that said, let's go. Okay, they've done it. They have finally put Trader's Tender on the store, this time in the limited time Corsage pack. This leaves the store at the end of August, so in one month. And it includes two new flower corsages, plus a bonus of 200 tendies. Yeah. Now, while they have technically done this before via items that would later be added to the trading post, so, you know, by buying them now, you will save tendies later, assuming you want to buy everything, uh, this is actually the first time that tendies themselves have directly dropped from a store item. And this time it's actually both because the two flower corsages will also hit the store later. And that means it's time for some maths. Our last wrist flower thingy cost 100 tenders. Here, we're getting two of them, plus 200 tender for five US dollars. That's 400 tendies worth of value for five bucks, meaning 100 tender costs $1.25, which is quite similar to the 100 premium currency to one United States dollar that most currency-based cash shops like in D4, like in Overwatch 2, roll with. Now, of course, you cannot buy tender directly. You can only do it through bundles. And you can only buy this bundle once, right? It's not like you can just go and buy 5,000 tendies and have all the stuff, which was really the main thing we were worried about in the past. So this is in line with what Ian said before. Ish. So whenever these assets were data mined, right, everyone got worried because they kind of looked like, you know, the gem store in a mobile game. But shortly after, speaking to GameSpot, Ian said they wouldn't be uh, they wouldn't be sold directly. And I'll just quote him directly. This is what Ian said. It shouldn't be too far-fetched to imagine we might have some significant bundles coming up later this year that may include some tender as a part of them. Okay, so a bunch of people are kind of accusing Ian of lying and they're not particularly happy about this. And ultimately this hinges on the specific words used. Ian said, quote, significant bundle. Now that may most people think of the likes of a deluxe edition or the BlizzCon virtual ticket. Uh, perhaps you could say at worst, the six month subscription. A $5 bundle that has 200 of them to people that doesn't feel like a significant bundle, right? It feels like an excuse to test the waters of having some tendies directly coming from the store. And then also thinking back to the Guardian bundle they had a little bit in the past, I think it does seem clear that Blizzard intends to have a large quantity of lower cost bundles. Things that I suppose might actually be called microtransactions, because $25, I don't think that's micro for a transaction. Anyway, so to me it seems clear the Blizzard will have a high quantity of low cost bundles that, uh, yeah, from now on will likely include tender. I suppose it's one of those things. Take a look at the various different, the kind of like more, you know, 100 to 200 tender costing items that are really useful for loads of transmogs. So imagine a bunch of cloaks bundled together, plus a bunch of tender. Seems like that's the kind of thing they'll want to do. Now, this is especially relevant because there's actually more in the way of time-limited deals. Because here, we've got a $15 paid transmog set that right now, at least based on the reactions online, uh, most people seem to think that it's so pedestrian-looking that it's absurd for $15 that even a lot of the people who are usually store stands, uh, they're complaining about it. 
And of course, what's wild here is that this actually will be rotated into the Tender Store in the future. It's leaving the game at the end of August. Now, the thing is, the in-game promotional image didn't actually make it clear, at least initially, that it was going to be later available in the Tender Store. And of course, this is also a time-limited thing ending August 31st. And I've got to say, 15 bucks for that doesn't feel right. Now, some more money for the Flame Plume Regalia? Like, I sort of get that. At least it feels premium. It comes with a bunch of variations and that sort of thing. This, though, looks like leveling gear from the next expansion, and I think that changes some of the player perception. Now, to be clear, if this looked amazing, then we would be having the argument of, oh, why is all the cool stuff in the store? right? That's a different argument. It's not what's happening today. Right now, the thing is that this feels like the concept of nickel and diming, because a store containing something that clearly looks like it's made for the store, that to people feels like, you know, oh, the, the Lego blocks fit together. It makes sense, right? That's one discussion. But if it feels like assets have been pillaged to make a quick buck, that feels egregious. That feels like nickel and diming. That feels like you've just grabbed some leveling gear from the next expansion or some leftover idea from BFA level up and you've just thrown it into the game now for 15 bucks just to see if people will bite. So overall, I think one thing is clear then. Dragonflight is an expansion that is retaining players well, right? We've consistently heard about that and the content cadence has been terrific, but it's an expansion that did not expand the game's reach as Blizzard themselves have seemingly even said in those earnings calls, right? It didn't get all the sales, but the people who are here are sticking around more. Now, the thing is, in the middle of an expansion cycle, you still want to be making money. So if you cannot readily increase your revenue via growing your quantity of customers, which is very hard to do in the middle of an expansion, then obviously you want to increase your revenue by increasing your average user spend. There are various different cohorts of users in World of Warcraft. Things like this are not targeted toward the cohorts that cluster their spend around new expansions and then just wander off for a bit. This is for the people who are just sticking with the game through all of time. Now, even to look at Call of Duty, it's recently started doing this as well. I just bring it up because it's another Activision Blizzard product. So the Call of Duty games actually launch with very limited monetization. I think most recently it was just a like cosmetic bundle that went to the Call of Duty endowment charity, right? Um, now, though, they have their Black Cell Battle Passes. I'll spare you all the gory details. Suffice to say, though, they've utterly surged that game's revenue. So basically, expect to see, when we're in the mid-expansion cycle, the same thing, just a different implementation, and seemingly, tendies are the way they can do it. Now, for our next story. I swear to you, this is not just WoW News Tendi Edition, but this is actually relevant. We have got a whole bunch of new class sets. Yeah, new class sets being added to World of Warcraft that come along with weapons. A lot of them look amazing, but they are being added to the trading post. So what you get is one thing, which is a set of a helm, shoulder, and waist for each class, along with a set of weapons. The weapons cost 500 tender, the armor sets cost 450. Does it feel a bit bizarre that it's not a full armor set? Yes, I feel like Blizzard's intent here is that these can be mixed and matched with other bits of gear in the game. And uh, certainly I saw a r slash wow thread going around of people who seemingly had transmogged existing bits of gear into the game with these new sets, and it did all look quite good. So I imagine that's all quite intended from them. Here's the deal though. These will be coming out at a rate of three classes per month for three months, and then the final four classes happening in December, right? And this starts as of September. Now, to add up the total Tandy cost, that is 12,350 uh, sort of additional tender happening over those four months, not including any other things that will be there. Obviously, you're getting 1,000 tender a month from just, you know, like your, your normal stuff in the game which does make me think about bundles. Now, there will be other things coming. As an example, two Felcor mounts have been data mined. Those cost 700 tendies each. And this is when I think back to Ian's quote. He said, quote, significant bundles. That obviously makes me think of pre-orders, of deluxe editions, or, you know, heroic and epic editions, as Blizzard calls them. And pre-orders are major for a company, right? Because one of the things that matters, like, yes, your overall revenue is great, but Cash flow, getting cash now to deploy it, that's big. You want to pull your money in right now. 
That's why pre-orders are uh, pretty big for a company like Blizzard. And WoW expansion pre-purchases coming with a character boost, access to allied races and things like that that we've had in the past, those are super powerful because you pre-order the game, but you get shit now. And that means you can actualize your post-BlizzCon excitement. Now, with 11.0 being announced this BlizzCon, and of course they're likely, you know, being a virtual ticket, and also this swell in store content causing, uh, you know, well, Trader's Tender store content causing some, you know, tendy hunger, right? There's a lot of things in the store. You only get a thousand tendies a month, so people will want more. Because of all this, I would expect big tender bundles. Going back to the class sets, I think it's a shame that these aren't coming from content like, say, a new Mage Tower experience or maybe something that is tied to the class halls. I think that the Tender Store is great when it's maybe older content or it's clearly like visual options that uh, just kind of makes sense for a store. But when it's something like this, like class sets, that does start to make me think that this should be more of an in-game content reward. Now to finish off the Tendy news, it's August. That does mean that there's another 200 Tendies up for grabs this month with the previously unobtainable 2008 Olympic event pet, the Ethereal Transmogrifier, which is a TCG toy, and the Alabaster WoW Classic Collector's Edition mounts headlining the store. That being said, my favorites this time are easily the red and blue cloak, hood, and scarves, as well as the garden grunt shields. Also, the monthly capstone blood troll set. Uh, yeah, that looks incredible. Very solid month, and it would be uncontroversially so if we weren't being nickel and dimed with the likes of the Corsage Bundle. Whew, okay, we've just talked about stores and things and transactions for a while, so let's talk about the game with patch 10.1.7. All right, Dream Surges, they're our new world event. They uh, bring both end game things to do as well as up to a 50% increase in the XP gained while you're in the zone that is impacted by the Dream Surge. That's all very nice. We've talked about it before. We'll probably do a proper roundup video of all these features and how they actually play out. For the news though, a nice things happened in that the vendors have been added, selling item level 402 Dreambound armor, jewelry, and weapons, all upgradable to item level 424, as well as what will likely be a mount and two pets, but that's not actually all, because there's another vendor that sells item level 415 Dreambound armor, weapons, and jewelry that is on the champion track rather than the veteran track, meaning that it could go all the way up to 437. That is indeed very strong, and all of this gear is catalyst compatible as well. And that does mean that it's actually a pretty damn terrific way for you to unlock your Aberus transmogs. And given how you can go to the Forbidden Reach and use that to quickly unlock a bunch of your Season 1 transmogs, I imagine then, whenever Season 3 kicks in, you'll still be able to do all your Dream Surges and stuff to more rapidly unlock those Aberus, uh, like, tier sets for those visuals on your character. Now, the 402 gear costs you Dream Surge Coalescence. This is a kind of more, like, dime a dozen, you know, very, uh, very frequent currency that you basically get from doing anything in a Dream Surge. As an example, when a Dream Surge is active, all of the rares in a zone are empowered, right? And that makes them drop Coalescence, Whelpling Fragments, and some 402 gear. Then also the Champion Track gear, that costs one Dream Surge Chrysalis. Now currently the intro and weekly quests give one of those each. But, uh, you know, who knows? There could be other ways of getting that. And in a really lovely touch, these are actually account bound. And that does mean that you can gear your alts up to item level 437, which will really help you crush out your final season two goals and also get ready for season three. So that's all very good indeed. And another thing, uh, we don't exactly know what the costs are going to be finally, but there is a way to get some worm crests, which are the ones from, uh, from Heroic, right? So that's pretty good. Uh, there'll be a way of getting at those as well via the Dream Surges. Overall then, pretty good. And I've got another nice thing for alts, but it won't be as powerful as last time because it's not coinciding with a bonus XP event. And that is the Turbulent Timeways. This is where we're going to be getting six weeks of back-to-back -back time walking, starting off with Wrath. Now, chances are this will be live in the six weeks before patch 10.2 drops. It'll be a great source of heroic Aberus gear because yes, they make that gear heroic whenever it's a Turbulent Timeways event and also plenty of XP for your alts. I mean, yes, there's no plus 50% XP to make the leveling extremely fast, but man, even just like, you know, doing like Legion and Wad Dungeons and time walking, you get so much XP so quickly from 60 to 70. But of course, 
You will also be getting, potentially, your XP bonuses in the Dream Surge zones. Those, I believe, are a baseline of 25%, and I think they can go as high as either 40 or 50, depending on what players do in that zone. So those will also be a very fast way to level. And the funny thing is, there's actually a lot going on in the game, because we've got the Secrets of Azeroth event, we've got the Kalimdor Grand Prix, we've got Brewfest all coming soon, and the likes of Brewfest have got some pretty nice-looking rewards. So, actually, yeah, a fair bit going on. Now, do you want some goggles? Like, legit, look at all of these goggles. These are the old engineering goggles that will now be available as cosmetic rewards from the new profession achievements that are coming in in 1017. Previously, right, these were locked to armor and profession, and that meant that if you just wanted a certain color for transmog purposes, you kind of couldn't really do that. But now, no matter what, you'll be able to wear the one that you like because they basically unlock as like a collection with all of the different colors. Just a good example of, uh, I don't know, just a nice little tweak, I suppose. Finally then, with Eastern Kingdom's Dragon Riding and Dawn of the Infinite Heroic Testable, we are surely very close to the release of this patch. But next, a surprising move. All right, Warcraft Logs are actually developing a more accurate damage meter overlay. And I say overlay, not add-on, because it's not an add-on. Right now, add-ons like details actually cannot show augmentation evokers properly because they don't read the combat logs, right? It works differently. So what Warcraft Logs has, has made then is not an add-on. It's an overlay and it's available via either their uploader or companion desktop applications. Basically, it's a bit like ACT in FF14, if you, you know, have that as a sort of touchstone. Anyway, the way it works is you can just have it on another screen or you can put it as an overlay on top of World of Warcraft. Now, this is quite big. This is the true, like, damage numbers that are going on, which uh, is, is important for quite a few reasons. Number one, right? It's way more accurate than other damage meters. That's just neat. Also, it has a built-in network effect. This is better. Lots of people use Warcraft logs. The more people that use this overlay, well, the more people will, you know, be having, like, actual good, accurate numbers in-game. That'll, of course, feed back into Warcraft Logs, so it's all very smart, all very good. And in fairness to Warcraft Logs, like, the development work that they've been doing lately and loads of features is really fantastic. But I think the major thing here for me is that, uh, Augmentation Evoker is probably not going to be the last support thing added to WoW, right? People want their bards, they want their tinkers, they maybe want additional specs to existing classes. And if those things are going to be support, then I do think that the community having access to a damage meter-like tool that is actually displaying that stuff accurately, yeah, I think that is an important resource for us to have. So, amazing job, Warcraft Logs. Keep it up, uh, we're all cheering for you. Next, though, I'll just roll through the other live stories. Number one, the Trial of Style is back. You can do it now. It's complete with new items, cosmetic hats, belts, boots, plus a dagger and a gun. Kind of neat stuff, even though, rather insanely, the next time it's going to come back is 2024. Because the timing of the Trial of Style in-game is absolutely mad. I don't know what they're smoking. It should be monthly. Castle Nathria LFR appeared in-game, but then was uh, quickly removed because it was a bug. The Amber Blade quest item now has a higher chance to drop from Time Rift, which will help you uh, get a few rewards and also finish off your achievement. And to finish today's news off with something that's actually just goddamn wacky and hilarious, if not a bit sad, Hearthstone has a new time-limited bundle for three cards that cost $50. $50 for three cards. Yes, I'm not lying. This isn't a goof. That's what it is. Um, that's the full price of a full video game that perhaps dozens or hundreds of developers worked on for like three years. No! Three cards in Hearthstone, where you will get a Diamond Hellia Legendary, one random Titan Signature Legendary card, and a random Festival of Legends Signature Legendary card. Dear Lord, that is absolutely mad. So uh, if you want to, as they put it, shine like the brightest Titan Forge creation with this bundle of three premium quality legendary cards, you can. And at 30% value, as the graphic lets you know, that is a true steal. And hey, hey, here's an idea. How about, right? Oh, I've solved it. Bobby, give me that check. 
why don't we have a value percentage labeled on the Corsage bundle? Because right now it implies that $1 equals 125 tender, and that's overly generous from the industry average of $1 equaling 100 premium currency, right? I mean, we'd rather divide things by 10, easier for our smooth brains to understand. So how about we say the Corsage bundle is actually plus 25% value? And that way, you're actually getting 400, uh, you know, for, for the price of 400 tendies, you're actually getting 500 plus 25% value. There you go. I'm a marketing genius. And with this master stroke, uh, yeah, tenders are now worth more money and customers get a better deal. Nice. Does that not sound like magic? <sighs> okay, that's it for the WoW news. Bit unfortunate that today it had to be so many news-related things. Um, but I suppose speaking of consumption opportunities, um, we had a daily deal. We were featured by Steam last week. So if you want to pick up The Pale Beyond um, at 25% off, I think today is the last day of that sale. Um, we also just had the uh, Apolog update, which has a kind of ridiculous number of like different, uh, you know, like endings and stuff for the uh, core cast members. So if you finish the game, this is all scenes that take place after you finish the game, where you'll get to find out what happened to everybody based on how you played the game and the decisions you made. And if you would also like to support our team, the likes of the, well, Collector's Edition that has cool things like our um, sort of table stand. I really enjoy this. Um, and of course, our art book. You can check out store.bellular.games. And uh, yeah, that's what's going on. Have a wonderful weekend. Thank you for tuning in. I'll see you next time. Thank you.